Hello and welcome to Cecil Says. Uh, this is a quick review. I don't know how quick it's going to be. I don't know why I'm lying. I might take my time. Anyway, I saw uh, Wrath of Khan from 1982 uh, in uh, movie theaters last week. It was uh, the 40th anniversary. Uh, it was a treat to get to see it on the big screen. I've seen it many times. It's a it's a absolute classic with uh, with uh, probably one of the best. Uh, best villains in cinema history the guy is motivated he's evil he's arrogant everything you need he's uh he's basically dr doom in in star trek <laughs> uh he's like an arrogant uh very smart genetically engineered uh villain um good stuff it's con it's con uh ricardo montalban there he is with the funky bunch in the middle I'll go through the story really quickly, just catch up. In case you haven't seen it, there will be spoilers. I mean, it's 40 fucking years old. You got to know what's going to happen here. Um, so basically, uh, there was the, the, the original series, which ran in the late 60s. They had an episode where they encountered uh, a ship of people that had been frozen for 200 years. And it turns out these were all like, uh, from like a eugenics uh, wars, uh, there was like genetic wars on Earth in the, in the 90s, 1990s. So uh, they've been frozen for 200 years, floating around, floating around space. Enterprise catch, you know, uh, finds their ship, reanimates them, and uh, basically uh, Spock and Kirk are trying to you know suss out what what this guy's up to. So here's a. Uh, the introduction to uh, Khan. They're having dinner with him and they're trying to figure out what he's up to. One man would have ruled eventually. As Rome under Caesar, think of its accomplishments. Then your sympathies were with. You are an excellent tactician, Captain. You let your second in command attack. While you sit and watch for weakness. You have a tendency to express ideas in military terms. So they're, they're figuring out that he's not uh, who he says he is. Uh, then, they, then they actually do discover that he was like basically trying to take, I think he took over two thirds of the world and then, you know, ran off into space. Uh, but he still has the ambition to, now that he sees, like, uh, the Enterprise, he's like, I could take over galaxies. Uh, you know, he's got, like, I think 82 people, maybe 74, but a couple of them died. Uh, and uh, he's like, we're all super smart. We're smarter than the humans are now. We're, we're stronger. And with, the, with these starships, we could take over the universe. So... This was the, from the original episode. You could see they were really good adversaries. This was a really well written. There's a lot of hokey original. I, I I like all of them. I even like the hokey ones. But this was like a a pretty well written out. And he was just a great villain. Ricardo Montalban did an awesome job. And I'm glad they brought him back for the movie. You left at the very time mankind needed courage. We offered the world order. We. But if you will excuse me, gentlemen, ladies, I grow fatigued again. So they, they figure out, like, uh, this guy's up to no good. But it's too late. He he pretty much takes over the ship. Uh, there's one of the uh, crew members, a uh, chick who's like a historian who's in, who thinks, you know, men were better in the past. And uh, she's in love with him. She ends up saving the ship you know, uh, betraying Khan. Uh, they were going to send them to a penal colony. And then uh, Kurt is like, listen, you guys are conquerors. You could actually help advance humanity. You rotting away in a prison does nothing for humanity. I'm going to give you an untamed planet and you could be conquerors there. 
you know, instead of going to prison. So he drops them off there and takes off, and we never hear of Khan again in the series. The, the uh, series ends, he never comes up. Then, what, 14 or 15 years later, Star Trek II comes out, and we find out what happened to Khan. Basically, uh, they, they, they marooned him on that planet to, uh, to tame, but the neighboring planet exploded, and uh, it made... Uh, the planet they were on inhospitable and uninhabitable and uh they were really fighting for their lives and a lot of them died including the girl who stayed with him from from the enterprise and uh khan is fucking pissed no one ever checked up on them they've been living you know barely living they have these like creatures that have killed a bunch of them 20 of them died from these little things i'm going to show you next and uh he wants fucking revenge. So it's good. He's smart. He's dangerous. And he's motivated. All the things you need for a great villain. Uh, then he, so, so Chekhov uh, is on a mission. I think they're looking for a planet to uh, test a Genesis device on. Uh, they, uh, they find the planet, but uh, there are, they accidentally go to Khan's planet because the planet they're looking for blew up. Uh, Khan finds Chekhov and remembers him from the Enterprise. And this is one of those classic scenes in cinema where uh, they put Khan puts these bugs in his ear, uh, which makes him docile and uh, able to be controlled. Captain Kirk was only doing his duty. No. <laughs> <laughs> This shit freaked me the fuck out like when I was a kid. But Khan is so good. I mean, he just has no mercy here. Like his facial expression while these guys are screaming is nothing. In fact, he's just happy because he, he finally is going to able – like he never thought he'd ever see anybody again or ever be have a shot at getting revenge at Kirk. Uh, so this is, this is huge for him, and uh, he's such a good villain. That's better. Now tell me, why are you here? And tell me where I may find James Kirk. So the reason they're there, like I said, is they're looking for a place to uh, set off the uh, the Genesis device, which, which can create life on dead planets. Uh, so obviously they tell him everything. The, uh, Khan and his crew takes control of check of the Reliant, which is Chekhov's ship, I believe, or Terrell, one of the one of those guys' ships. It's called the Reliant. Uh, the people that created the Doomsday, or I mean the Genesis device, are David and Carol. It's some chick Kirk used to bang, and I guess they had a kid, and I don't think the kid knows. I don't. I didn't. I didn't really understand that part. Whether the kid didn't know or Kirk didn't know. Anyway, uh, this guy is Kirk's son. Uh, he was kind of miscast. What's his name? Merrick Merrick Bertris or something like that. I, I forget his name. The only thing I remember him from, other than this movie, is uh, he was in a TV show called Square Pre Square Pegs in the early '80s. It was like very 80s like valley girl type thing and had sarah jessica parker and uh jamie jamie gertz is that her name anyway this kid was in it it's this kid here he's uh that's supposed to be kirk's son looks nothing like kirk acts like nothing like Kirk. just miscast the guy is a good actor but uh i didn't see it it didn't add anything to the story uh didn't really need it it was like a side adventure that no no one cares. Uh, I guess it was to set up the next movie. But um, yeah, I didn't like him as the son. Anyway, the actor ended up dying in uh, 1989 of AIDS, uh, which is sad. I mean, I didn't like him as Kirk's son, but I'm sad he died. But um, I'm not a monster, you know. 
so uh, Khan has the ship, and he's going to use the fact that Kirk trusts the ship to get really close and just blow the Enterprise away, um, which is what he does. He gets really close. No one's responding. Uh, on the Enterprise are the original crew, which are there for inspection, and a and basically an entire crew of cadets. So it's the senior staff, these old timers, and all brand new recruits. One of the recruits or, or cadets is uh, a young Kirstie Alley, who is hot as hell, as Savic. And uh, she's like, hey, I know you guys know the Reliant, but you know the rules are we got to put our shields up if no one's answering us, you know, Spock's like, listen, you know, Kirk knows the fucking rules. You don't, you don't have to tell him the rules. Uh, but it turns out she was right. Kirk fucking had his guard down. Uh, Khan use it. And let's just look at Kirstie Alley again. She was dope in 1982. Good for you. Anyway. Uh, so this is the Reliant getting the sneak attack in on the Enterprise. Phasers on target. Locking phasers on target. They're locking phasers. Ray shields. Fire! Yeah, so they, they completely fu fuck up. Oh, I've still got... Wait, were you able to see that, or is this behind it? I don't know if I fucked up. Anyway, I don't think you're able to see it. I gotta play that again. <laughs> I had Kirstie Alley's picture up there. This is, this is basically uh, the Reliant taking out the Enterprise. Kirk had his shields down. He shouldn't have. He was against protocol, and uh, they got fucked up. Phasers on target. They're locking phasers. Ray Fire! Yeah, so Kirk doesn't even know what the fuck is going on. Like, that's his boy's ship, and he's like, what the fuck just happened? And uh, the next scene is where he realizes, where Khan reveals himself that it's him. And Khan's like, listen, you're fucked. I'm going to, you, you, you know, he knew exactly where. And he studied the Enterprise 15 years ago. He knows all the weak spots and where to take it out. So he's like, uh, I'll tell you what, I won't kill your whole ship if, if you give me uh, all of everything you know about the Genesis device. He wants this thing. He's going to use it as a weapon. He's like, I'll just kill you if you give me the Genesis device. Um. So this is, this is a con revealing that he is the one who just attacked Kirk. Khan. You still remember, Admiral. I cannot help but be touched. I, of course, remember you. What is the meaning of this attack? Where is the crew of the Reliant? Surely I have made my meaning plain. I mean to avenge myself upon you, Admiral. I deprive your ship of power, and when I swing around, I mean to deprive you of your life. But I wanted you to know first who it was who had beaten you. Calm. Fucking Khan's great. Great villain. If it's me you want, I'll have myself beamed aboard. All right, so Khan's like, this is what Khan gives him. I was like, all right, I'll take you and the Genesis, Genesis device. So uh, Kirk's like, fine, I'm going to beam everything over to you. But because Kirk knows these uh, ships, he, uh, he basically beams over the override for the Reliant and is able to drop the Reliant shields for a few seconds and fucking, you know, save themselves. Sir, our shields are dropping. Raise them! I can't! Where's the override? The override! Fire! 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 We can't fire, sir! Why can't you? They've damaged 
damage the proton control and the warp drive. We must withdraw. No! No! no. We must. <laughs> Yeah, good scene. Um, yeah, and you should see Khan is just like fucking obsessed with revenge on uh, on uh, Kirk. Uh, it had good um, had good uh, good stakes. Like you could tell, this movie. First of all, it's the original crew, but with like all cadets against these like you know super smart, super strong warriors. So uh, that are completely ruthless. Uh, and now they're in like a wounded um, enterprise. And uh, Scotty's nephew is one of the cadets and he gets killed. And it's kind of uh, it's kind of cool. It, this is why the movie works is you actually give a shit about the people in the movie and people just aren't dying for no fucking reason. So, you know, the stakes are kind of high when you see uh, Scotty's uh, nephew die. Is the word given, Admiral? The word is given. Warp speed. I. I think this kid was on Little House on the Prairie. <sighs> he stayed at his post when the trainees ran. Admiral. Good scene. Like I said, it showed the stakes were high. Khan's ruthless. Uh, then it goes to, I think Khan ends up, Khan ends up with the doomsday device anyway. I forget how the fuck he gets it. I think he goes over to the uh, space station and kills everybody. Uh, and uh, get ends up getting the uh, Genesis device. Uh, but he wants to kill Kirk. Uh, I think he takes him into a, a nebula. And they get into like a, a kind of a submarine battle where neither of them can see each other using their instruments. So they're they're searching for each other like cat and mouse. Uh, it's a pretty good scene. They're going after each other in this nebula and it's pretty high tension. So uh, Kirk ends up getting a drop on him and uh, disabling the Reliant and uh, fucking Khan is like fucking irate. <laughs> All he wants to do is kill Kirk and uh, he's like, fuck this shit. I'm going to set off this Genesis bomb. Their warp drive is broken, so they'll never get away in time. I'll kill him anyway. So here's Khan getting his revenge. From hell's heart, I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. Yeah, and uh, Herman Melville actually saw this movie in theaters and actually gave those lines to uh, Captain Ahab in, he, in his book Moby Dick. So he was really moved by this movie. If you ever read the book, you'll probably see, uh, you'll probably recognize those lines, but that's di directly lifted from Wrath of Khan. Uh, so, oh, here's something cool that I fucking, so I'm watching this movie. I've seen it a zillion times. I love it. But um, when I saw it in the theater the other day, I'm like, one of the guys who's like, oh, so anyway, the, their, their warp drive is fucked. They can't get away in time. Spock sacrifices himself. He goes into the core, which radiation poisoning. He dies so that the entire crew can live. But then the guy who gives the okay that the warp drive is online is Bruce McCullough from Kids in the Hall. I don't know if many of you know who that is, but I, I've known him for years. And I never realized he was in this movie. He has one line, which is cool. Uh, so here he is when he at the end after Spock... Uh, Gets everything online. He's the guy who tells uh, Kirk the drive is online. Sir, the mains are back online. Yes, Scotty. Go, Zulu!
Yeah, so Bruce McCullough is in this movie. <laughs> I don't know how exciting that is for any of you, but I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, and then we got a really good death scene. Spock sacrifices himself, and uh, this is the goodbye between uh, Spock and Kirk, which is like it didn't do too cheesy. They didn't even give they didn't give Kirk too much lines. It was kind of just say goodbye, he dies, which is good. It's perf one of the best death scenes. If you get a chance. Uh, because it's a meaningful death scene. Like Spock sacrifices himself to save the crew. If you get a chance, watch Chris Gore's video on uh, where he talks about like the death of Han Solo compared to the death of Spock and how much better it is. Because after, I've you know after watching that video and then now watching this movie in the theater, I was like, yeah, this was such a good death scene, good funeral scene, good goodbye to a uh, you know an iconic character. And all we shall be. Your friend. Live long and prosper. I would probably say you too, or something really stupid, and be like, fuck. Good death scene. Chokes me up every time, but the funeral is actually uh, chokes me up even more. Uh, really, really good goodbye to uh, an iconic character, even though it meant nothing because they brought him back the next movie. But still, fucking movie's good. Of my friend, I can only say this. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels. <laughs> This was the most human. Human. Others? Yeah, good death scene. Excellent movie. Uh, now, this was the 40th anniversary, so it was in theaters. I saw it last Monday. This video is coming out on this Monday. So basically, I did none of you a favor if you're finding out that it was in theaters last week because I believe it's already out of theaters. So for all of you that do want to see this movie in a movie theater, what I would advise you to do is do not die in the next 10 years. Um, and you can watch the 50th uh, anniversary. On I'm sure it'll be in theaters. Also, I just saw that uh, Kirk – I'm not Kirk. What's his name? Shatner is – doing a screening in Atlanta on March 9th, I think, somewhere March 14th, March 9th, uh, where you can, and it's pretty cheap too. It's like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Uh, tickets were still available when I looked and it was, uh, you, it's, you watch the movie with William Shatner and then he does like a talk afterwards. And then I think after that you could do pictures probably for an ungodly amount, but uh, might be worth it. Uh, because he's in his 90s, that's his, we're running out of time with him. So, uh, yeah, if you want to go see that, that's in Atlanta. And uh, yeah, don't die in the next 10 years if you uh, if you want to see it on screen. Either go to Atlanta in March or don't die in the next 10 years and you'll be able to see it in theaters. Uh, so thank you for watching this nonsense. And uh, this is a recommend, but you can't see it for... 10 years uh i mean you can watch it on cable or whatever anyway if you like this video hit the like button subscribe share it with your friends leave a comment below that's important it gets the video seen more the more comments i get the more views i get so much appreciated have a good day night whatever i don't even know what the, i don't know what the fuck i'm saying when they submit when they play an outro. Mm -hmm.